Um, when you edit nonfiction, you're trying, I mean, nonfic nonfiction it means, it can mean any number of things, right, in certain fiction, but nonfiction, when I think about editing nonfiction, I think about my friend Eric Chinsky, who works at Farris Press, who will be typically trying to take an argument, make sure that the argument is sourced right, is argued right, and that the argument maintains its suspense and, and, and is revealing things quickly enough, all stuff that you worry about in fiction. But I find it hard. With fiction, you can do it. I, can, I find myself intuitively just noticing whether the voice, things like voice and character and motivation are making sense from moment to moment. And I don't tend to have the whole book in my head. Dan Meneker, who was for a long time a fiction editor at The New Yorker, I asked him if he had any advice because I don't have much experience editing short stories. He said, well, the difference between editing a short story and a novel is that with a short story, the short story, you need to have the whole thing in your head the whole time. And I've always thought, when I think about um, sculpture, Cellini, or um, well, any sculpture, or a symphony, the idea that someone knew what the whole thing looked like makes me feel a little bit sick to my stomach because it's so far beyond anything I can imagine. And I feel a little bit the same way when I look at a really beautifully edited work of nonfiction. I've edited some nonfiction, and I've had fun editing some nonfiction, but it tended to be loosey-goosey, and it tended not to have to do the kinds of work that, um, oh, uh, The Good Soldiers, that uh, the, the, the book by, um, 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 damn, I'm sorry, or, Finkel. Or, no, no, not, not The Good Soldier. The Good Soldiers uh, by a guy named, I think his name is Finkel. That it was about... Um, David Finkel. David Finkel, thank you. Um, a, a book about s soldiers in combat. And it was so beautifully put together. And I, I just knew that I would never have been able to help him. I don't know whether he needed help, but I would never have been able to help him uh, make his argument and keep the drama of the argument going. It would have been impossible for me. Someone else might have a different set of skills and inclinations. But. I've actually never edited fiction, so I can't speak to that. With nonfiction, um, I really end up just trusting the, the writer on the piece, where we have some, such in-depth conversations and correspondence that when I read the piece, I feel like we've already covered so much of everything that it was going to be, um, that whatever they turned in is almost exactly what I wanted. Um, and if anything, I want more. Like, oh, I want you to expand this or make this into a sidebar or something to that effect. Um, I can see what you're saying, Lauren, about it being well, maybe a little bit more meticulous because you can get in trouble when it's nonfiction. <laughs> a lot easier, as we've learned from some of the debacles of the last few years but with <laughs> memoirs. But um, I actually, I always wonder how people, I feel like I'm, I'm too obsessive compulsive disorder. Like, I wouldn't be able to edit fiction right because I'd be, <laughs> Worrying about why they used rope for cheese in the story instead of, you know, Swiss cheese. You know, I would be so like hung up on that fact that I wouldn't get to like page four. <laughs> so it's better that the story has to just kind of flow and have a beginning, middle, and end, and it's not experimental or anything. He'd never eat Swiss. Right, exactly. <laughs> it would 